Hi guys, how are you doing? So this is the second video of the simple microservice project series and in this video we'll actually start building the project. I've already given you a demo in the first video and so in this video we'll start building it. So uh, I'm in my terminal and I'll create a new directory simple microservice project. All right. And now you'll have to cd into it so you'll say cd. All right. And here you'll create two directories, all right? So one directory is going to be called API. So you'll see this here. And you'll create another directory called JWT Creator. So as you know, we're doing something very simple. We'll have a program that will create the JWT token for us. Another program that will create, uh, that will um, you know, decode that token and show us some information if uh, we are authorized to see that information, right? Based on the token. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll go inside each of these folders and we'll go mod in it. All right. So let's quickly do that. So we'll say CD API and here we'll say go mod in it API. And let's just check if uh, the mod file was created. It was created. Yes. And now we'll also go to JWT creator and go mod in it. JWT creator and let me check if it's there yes now I'm outside in my main folder for the project and I'll open up uh, the project using code editor in my case I'm using JW, uh, VS code and so each of these folders have their own GoMod files right and each of these will also have their own main.go files so as you know that main.go file is the main file from which uh, the program enters so it's the most important file in a project in a golang project this is very right uh, you know this is where basically the program will enter from so for the api you'll write package main so this API is going to be very simple, right? So you've already seen the demo. Uh, it's just going to show you something like super secret information. And it's just going to check if the token that you're giving it to this, uh, giving to this is authorized or not, right? So it's very going to be very simple. And the packages that I'll need, I'll need FMT. I'll need log. And I'll need net slash HTTP OS. And I'll need github.com slash DGRI. J A L B A slash J W T go right. This I obviously need this in both my files to be able to create the token and also to um, decode it. All right. So what I can also do is I can go into each of these projects, uh, each of these folders, and go um, get GitHub.com slash D G R I J L V A slash J L B T go. I don't know why it's taking so long. So it's added, and now we'll also go to J W T Creator, and we'll add the same thing here as well. All right, so going back to your program, here you'll see where my signing key, you'll create a variable called my signing key. And um, let me explain to you, let me just write this down and then explain to you what this is doing. All right. So if, if you've seen my JWT authentication tutorial series, you already know there's something called as a secret key. So in that tutorial, we uh, left out the secret key as in it was completely optional. Uh, here also it's completely optional in the sense if you want to create uh, a secret key in, an, in a dot .env file, you can create a secret key. And this basically adds more noise to your um, JWT token so that, uh, you know, 
uh, nobody else can basically hack your uh, token easily all right so the secret key only you will have uh, wherever you want to store it only you will have the secret key and the secret key is required to to be able to decode that jwt token and also to create it all right so that's where my signing key will be i'm not going to create it right now you can go ahead and create it all right so um, before any of this starts right there will be a function for handling requests all right which will basically have your http routes and here we'll say http.handle and all we're doing is checking if uh, everything is authorized right to show you the home page and so that's why we'll have the is authorized function which we'll work on right now in some time and then we'll also log dot fatal http dot listen and serve on port 9001 so to start uh, a golang server it's really simple you just have to write this one line listen and serve uh, and on port 9001 and it'll start basically all right it'll start a server on port 9001 if you have not seen uh, the tutorial of Golang that I've created on how to create a web server on uh, in, uh, using Golang, you can check it out on my channel. It's one of the first uh, Golang videos on my channel. So here you'll say func main. So func main is the most important function in any uh, uh, Golang file. This is basically where the code, uh, the com com like the control enters into the file. All right. So as you had seen uh, in the demo. Uh, we were just printing out server when this uh, program starts. We're just printing out server uh, in the console. And here we'll just call this function handle requests. So as soon as the command, uh, the control enters into the, f uh, the main function, you w print out server and you call this function handle requests. Handle request function basically if you're on the root route, which is just slash, it's going to check if everything is authorized or not. All right, and so when you saw in the demo that I was curling uh, this uh, port 9001, that basically means that we're hitting the slash route, the root route. And there we were sending the token, and on the token we were just checking if everything is authorized or not, and then we were showing that super secret information. So now uh, we will start working on our home function. Okay, so we'll say func home page and it's going to be w http dot response writer comma r sorry there's no dot here r and it's a pointer to http dot request so a function like this which is a, ha a handler function uh, it will have two things right one is the response and one is the request so request is something that the user sends to it and it res receives it that's why it's a pointer and then response is something that you send back from this function to the user all right somebody who's trying to access this api and here we will say fmt dot f print f w comma super secret information right so the response from this api is super secret information as you've seen in the demo already now we have to create our is authorized function so let's do that so we'll say func is authorized here this function also has http dot response writer comma http dot request And here, what we're returning from this function is a handler, as you can see, right? So this is what we're returning from this function. So here we'll say return HTTP dot handle func. Inside that we'll have a function which will have a W and R again. Your W will have HTTP dot response writer and R will be a pointer to HTTP dot uh, request. All right and here inside this itself this whole thing that you're returning inside that itself you'll check for your token so in your header as you know that we are passing our token in the header and it will be 
uh, we are passing it like this token so token is equal to whatever token digital token that we are passing to this function so in the header if there's a token right if the token is not equal to nil that is if there's no token sorry if there is a token which is it means it's not equal to nil then we'll go ahead and uh, you know proceed with the rest of the what do you call it um, procedure all right so we have the outline of this function we have all these two functions so this um, we can carry on a little later once we create our uh, you know main.go file for our jlpt creator function so let's head over there here the same things you'll say package main and you're going to import um, so since you have, I'm, I'm assuming you've already seen my JLPT token project series, uh, this is probably, uh, you know, very easy to understand. There's not much going on uh, till now. And here you'll have FMT again, log, and net slash HTTP OS. And one more thing I'll need is time. Right. And then you need the JWT package which I'm going to be referring to as JWT in the rest of the, in this complete file, github.com slash dgrijlva slash JWT dash go. All right. And as you know, this in this file, we create the JWT token, and this is where we again need our signing key variable, which is going to have the secret key. Okay. Now here we'll have again our func main, right? So this is the most important function of this entire file. This is where the control goes in into this file. So in this func main, we'll just have a function called handle requests. We'll just call that function. For handle requests, we'll say handle requests and HTTP dot handle func. And this um, file also uh, has a route, uh, has, a, has a root route, where you call the index. And here also you'll start server, right? So you'll say http.listen and serve on port 8080. Now you can change it on these ports, it can be anything on your system, you know, I'm using 8080. Doesn't have to be uh, the same on your system. Now. I need to create the index func. So here I'll say HTTP dot response writer comma r, which is a pointer to HTTP dot request. Here, uh, if you don't, if you've not used the HTTP package, you basically uh, response and request are given to us with the help of HTTP package, right? And so I we want to have a function called get JWT. Right? We'll have to create that function soon. And all that this index function does, so when you hit the slashed out, you hit the index function, and the index function basically calls the get uh, JWT function. And here you'll have, you'll get back a valid token, basically, from this function. And you'll print that um, token out. So you'll say valid token. And, and, We'll also check for the error. So if error not equal to nil, we'll say fmt dot print ln. Sorry. Fail to generate the token. And here we'll say fmt dot f print f. The response is basically the string which is the valid token. So this uh, function, this file, when you run the JWT creator and you curl on this file, which is basically hitting the root route with the get method, all you do is you will basically create a, a token. And if you get an error, you basically say that it's failed to create, a, uh, failed to generate the token for you. Uh, but if everything goes well, it's going to just print out the token for you, which you can use, uh, copy and use in the other file. All right. Now here, there's only one function uh, to build to uh, left to build, which is the get JWT function. All right. So it, it returns two things, string and error. 
string is basically your token and your error and that's how you know this what this function is doing and to create the token you can say jwt.new jwt dot signing method hs 256 so this just creates quickly a new token for you and we need to have some token claims so here you will say jwt dot map claims and now you can also have multiple claims claims is basically the information that you want to add so here we'll have authorized equal to true and we'll have our client you can put your own name like akhil sharma or something like that you can have some aud information iss information and expiry date also you can have so here we'll just put anything randomly like billing dot jwt go dot io and here we'll put, uh, put jwt go dot io and here we'll say time dot now this is the expiration time dot add and we'll add some minute to it so i'll say minute sorry add that bracket time dot minute multiplied by one which is basically one minute and it's a unix timestamp all right now all we have to do is say token dot signed string and we have to pass my signing key to it which will have our secret key and you'll get your token string comma error so now you have your token finally you can just check for the error if error not equal to nil fmt dot error f something went wrong and you can show what went wrong here with the help of percentage s comma error dot error so you'll return the error if there's the error but if everything went well you'll just return the token string comma nil all right so this file is complete your jwt creator file is complete but your api file is not complete and i have to rush to a meeting a quick meeting and there's a lot here to be done basically it'll take about um, 10 to 15 minutes more this function so i'll have to tackle it in a, in a different video right so uh, this series basically is just three videos. The first video which was the intro video and then this video and then the next video we'll just complete this and test out both of the functions and everything will be working. So it's not a big program and it was the right program to start you off with microservices. So I hope you're enjoying it and I hope you're excited because we'll be building on this knowledge slowly and we'll be building more and more complicated microservices, all right? So thanks a lot for watching and do subscribe to this channel if you haven't subscribed already so that you come to know when the next video of this series comes out. And um, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. So